Hey watch friends, today we're going to take a look at the second offering from the microbrand Mitch Mason and this is the Maelstrom. This one do note up front, this is a prototype that was sent in for review, this is just a loner, so if you see any scratches, scuffs, imperfections, etc, they can be attributed to that. Additionally we'll be talking about some production updates as well. In case you missed it, we did actually recently feature an unboxing, which if you click on the channel, you'll see a description for, uh, for that one. It looks through the packaging, you'll see the box, the watch roll, all the things like that. As far as the basic specs on this one, as you can see, it's going to be a compressor style watch. It's going to be coming with standard with a one year warranty. The case is going to be 40 millimeters and that's measured from roughly the three o'clock to the nine o'clock position. The bezel does step down about a millimeter and a half coming in at 38.5 millimeters. The lugs are going to be a strap change friendly 20 millimeters. The lug to lug is going to be a versatile 47 millimeters, so that should work well on both small and large wrists alike. The overall thickness on this is going to be coming in at 12.7 millimeters, and that is including this sapphire crystal. You might be able to see there, this does have a slight double dome to it, so it's not a real pronounced or real high dome crystal there, but that is a double dome, and that is a sapphire, and it does have an inner AR. As far as the movement, this one is ticking away with a Miyota 9015, which is going to be a high beat movement, has all the features you'd want, hacking, hand winding, etc. Great overall movement, one I like a lot. As far as water resistance, this one's going to come standard with 300 meters or 30 atmospheres of water resistance. So it does fit the overall kind of do all dive style uh, that this one has and that you'd expect for a compressor style watch. As far as the weight, this one size to my six and a half inch wrist on this bracelet is only going to be coming in at roughly 154 or 155.4 grams. So I would consider this to be what I always refer to as being kind of the middleweight class. Uh, so right up, right smack dab, not a real light one, not a real heavy one, just right in the middle. Looking at some of the characteristics of this. First, for the dial. This one is going to be available in a number of different color options here. You're actually going to have the gray that we're looking at today. There is a light blue color, there is a green color, which is a very unique shade. Additionally, there's a black, and then during their Kickstarter campaign, which was successfully funded, they did add a white variant as well. And then there's also going to be a spin-off one. It's an exclusive for the Facebook microbrand watch group, and that ended up being selected as a burgundy, and it does have some other changes. You'll see at the 9 o'clock position, it adds their logo and has some other changes on the case back and crown as well. As far as the characteristics of the dial, each of these are going to feature a sandwich dial, and specifically, it's going to be sandwiched at the 12, 3, and 9 position. Additionally, each dial, including the white, will have a sunburst pattern to it. So it has nice, as you can see, kind of a linear uh, pattern to, uh, to that going around the dial, and that does pick up nicely when the sun hits it. Additionally, around the perimeter, it does have flat on the dial, but it is a slightly raised chapter ring. Around that chapter ring, it does have individual minute markers, and on this particular gray that we're looking at, you can see it does have blue accent color. Additionally, this does have not only your pronounced marks at the five, uh, at the five minute marks, but additionally, it does have the numerals on the interior of that as well. Across the dial, you're going to notice that it does have printed text on all surfaces. So you're going to have at the 12 o'clock position printed with the name as well as automatic, so the brand name and automatic. And then down at the six o'clock position, it will have the name of this model, which again is the Maelstrom. And that down at the six o'clock, unlike the top, is going to be a little more of a fanciful font. Additionally, around the perimeter, as we talked about, it does have uh, printing for all of your markers with the exception of the sandwich accents. Switching over to the hardware, this one does have polished hardware. So each, uh, all three of your hands are going to be nicely polished. Each of those is a uniquely styled. The minute hand is going to be what I would describe as a pencil style. The hour hand, which will be shortened on the production version, is what they describe as their signature knot. If you saw their Chronicle, which was their first offering, that one did have that pattern as well, though it's executed differently here. And then finally, the second hand will have the uh, an, an arrow uh, indicator uh, about two thirds of the way up there as well. The loom on this particular one is going to be, I believe, a BGW9. All of the variants are described as being Super Luminova. Uh, however, they didn't specify the type of loom, though this one, to my eye, looks possibly like a C1, uh, but it is most likely a BGW9. 
The loom on the prototype I found works very well on the bezel as well as the hands. However, on the dial in the individual markers there, I would like to see those kicked up. And I'm pleased to report that is one of the improvements that they're going to be making on the production model. So that is a welcome addition there. And I look forward to seeing that enhanced. Additionally, they'll actually be adding a uh, loomed date window also. This is different than some I've seen in the past. It actually has the text that's going to be loomed. From my past experience, I will say I expect that that's probably going to be more of a novelty than it will be practical usage, but it's still a cool touch nonetheless and one that I welcome. Shifting over to the bezel here, the bezel on this on the exterior is going to be a fixed bezel. And as you can see, it does have a nice step and then it goes into a chamfer that butts right up against the crystal that does have radial brushing going around the perimeter. And as mentioned, that is fixed. The actual mechanical bezel for the dive watch function is going to be this inner rotating bezel. This, as you can see, does have five minute markers uh, all the way around, and it does have a crown pip at the 12 o'clock. Additionally, as you saw in the loom footage, that is going to be loomed as well. If you look in close, you can see that the patterning on this bezel is actually going to have a radial brushing uh, all the way around. So that adds a little bit of allure, and that is going to be a sloped bezel, so it almost gives like a re-hot function for that, and I think that's nicely done. Additionally, as mentioned, this is a rotating, as you'd expect for compressor style, so we can watch that go. It's going to be this crown at the two o'clock position. On the prototype, it is noted that the crown action isn't as good as it will be on the production version, so that will be improved, but I haven't found it to be too bad in usage. It just feels a little more delicate and a little less tight than you would otherwise like. Shifting over to the case, you can see this has very nice uh, lines to, uh, to the case here. It has a gradual downturn for the, for the lugs, so it gives a nice gentle slope or flow as you go across. Additionally, you'll notice the most pronounced is going to be that this has brushing across the bulk of the mid case. But one thing to note though, is this does actually have kind of an undercut to that. So you can see this doesn't cut straight down like many of the slab style would, that actually cuts back towards the, uh, the case back, which I think is a nice touch and I think that visually slims this out and actually helps to the way that this hugs onto the wrist, which I think it wears very nicely as you saw on the uh, outdoor footage. Additionally, this does have nice sections of brushing and the brushing is cleanly done as well. You can see it does have a large section across the top, breaks up the lines and again, really slims out that mid case. So I think that's well done. Shifting over, you can see at the outer perimeter for the lugs, this does have drilled lugs, so that will add to the stretch, uh, strap change ease. And with those 20 millimeter uh, lugs, that will be uh, nice to uh, put. You probably already have others in your collection as well. Shifting over to the actual crowns, you can or the actual lugs rather, you can see these just do flow down nicely. They have that little bit of a taper on the outside with that chamfer cut, but otherwise are pretty traditionally shaped. Shifting over to the crown side, you can see that this does not have any crown guards and the pattern that's on the reverse side does carry through with both that brushing and that polishing across the top. Shifting over to the crowns themselves, these ones are both going to be measuring in at 6.4 and of course this is a dual crown configuration. Each of those crowns uh, is going to be screw down as we saw there. The threading for that I found to be clean, easy to manipulate, works well. Additionally, these are both going to be signed. You can see at the four o'clock position, you're going to have the Mitch Mason logo. And then at the two o'clock position, it carries through with that knot pattern that you saw in the hour hand. So I think both of those are well done. One of my favorite parts though of the crown, if you look at it from the aerial position, the way they did this milling with those angular cuts, Maelstrom is a whirlpool kind of effect. And I really think that this captured that essence of movement and that swirling type of, type effect here with the crowns. This was one of the things that struck me with this watch design right off the bat. Really like that quite a lot. And we'll talk about that further. Shifting over to the case back. This case back, I think is another area where it's exceptionally well done and really incorporates nicely into the theme. So this, as you can see there, does carry, you can see the swirling water, but then you can of course see the pronounced whale in the middle there which I think is a nice touch. This to me has a very, very old nautical feel to it with the overall stamping pattern around the perimeter. And I think that's really cool. The pattern on this is going to be very deep. So you can see here, it has a lot of depth, very 3D to that. However, it's still all smooth, no sharpness whatsoever. I've never felt any kind of hot spots, any kind of discomfort on the wrist while wearing this one. So that's excellently done. I like that quite a lot. 
Do note that while this is a screw down case back already on the prototype, it will continue to be on the production version. But for those keyholes, whereas they're square now, they will be rounded out on the production version, which I actually think will incorporate better. And I look forward to, uh, to that change. So that's nicely done. Around the perimeter, you can see that this does have radial brushing and it does have nice clean text as you go around. The text will be updated on the production version to better space that with the keyholes as well. So another nice little improvement there. Shifting over to the bracelet, this one of course is coming with a 20 millimeter bracelet. It does have a fairly aggressive taper. So this goes from 20 millimeters up at the lugs down to the clasp, it tapers down to 16 millimeters. As you can see, it is going to be an H-link shaped bracelet here. And these links are going to be predominantly pol uh, brushed rather, but it does have polished chamfers on the outside that you can see there. Additionally, the articulation on this, I think is pretty nice and smooth throughout. So I find this to have a pretty good drape uh, on, uh, on the wrist. It does have a female end link here. So you can see that nice cut in. And then that does have pretty good articulation and it does fold flat back to the case back as well if you're looking for that uh, that solid articulation there too. As far as the retention, these are going to be retained with screws. So nice easy strap changes there. I will have a link to a uh, screwdriver if you need a good one um, on uh, Amazon. It's an Amazon affiliate link so using that does help out the channel. Additionally, looking over at the clasp, you can see this is going to be a fold over style clasp with a double pusher and it does have open up to have a milled bridge in here as well. This is additionally going to be signed and it stays with the overall theme where you can see that it does have brushing down the main portion of the clasp and then carries over those polished accents uh, on the side as well. And this does have six micro adjust holes on there. So it's a pretty well specced overall for, uh, for the bracelet. This one does, I neglected to say, have quick releases also. So in addition to having drilled lugs, this factory strap or bracelet actually has quick releases uh, as well. So very, very easy to, uh, to change this one around, whichever option you prefer to go for that. All right, so now that we have a better feel for this watch itself, let's go ahead and look at a couple comps just to get an idea as far as the color for this Sunburst. So this one here on the right, this is a Dorenzo. This is their Mondau or DRZ04. You know, very different execution of a gray here. You can see this is going to be a lot darker than the Mondau, except this one has more of a uh, darkening effect, so it gets like that Fume look to it and really has more light shift, whereas this stays pretty saturated. Bringing in on the lighter end of the spectrum, this is a, um, RZE Resolute, says Rice on the dial, but they did change their name there, and you can see what this looks like against a lighter sand type texture. All right, so hopefully that gives you a better feel for this watch itself. Now let's go ahead and wrap this up with some of the positives, some of my critiques, as well as the overarching summary. First, for the positives. As we saw, this has great selection of colors. There's really a little bit of something for everyone, so no matter which one strikes your fancy, I really think there's a lot of excellent choices. As far as wrist presence, this one, despite being a relatively small watch, and for a compressor style, I think that it is relatively svelte uh, overall in all specs and proportions. This again is my six and a half inch wrist. I think it hugs nicely onto the wrist. I find it's pretty much a dream to, uh, to wear. Overall, it's comfortable, no hot spots, nothing really to complain about there. Think that's excellently done. We already talked about my affinity for these crowns. I'm not always a huge dual crown fan. However, I've got to say, I'm very happy. I like this crown a lot. The only thing better than having one of it is having two of it. So I think that's, a, that's an excellent touch there. Works perfectly with the theme. Very striking, very easy to grip a hold of. So functionally, it's solid as well. Great job there. The case back, already talked about that. This is one of the favorite case backs that I've ever seen, exhibition or otherwise. Uh, so this, with that stamping, I just think it's beautifully done. I think it fits the theme extremely well, but additionally, I find that it doesn't have any hot spots, so it's functionally uh, is sound there also, but I just really like the look of that one. And then finally, the finish. On the prototype, certainly there is some cleanup work to do. There are some improvements and enhancements that are mentioned, but overall, I think it's pretty well done. I think for the price point, which this one's going to be coming in at pre-order uh, from their site, which will be linked in the description, it's going to be around $549. And the shipping for this is slated for around March of 2022. So it's not too far uh, in the future here. Overall, I think it's pretty well equipped and pretty well specced and finished for that price. As far as some of the critiques, 
One, and this is true for the Chronicle as well, it's a signature for the brand, but I do find it to be polarizing, and that is the Hour Hand. That knot, you know, whether you love it or hate it, it is a signature for the brand. Uh, for me, personally, I wasn't that sure about it until actually having one in hand. I did find that that adds to legibility for it, and on this particular one, I really don't mind the look at all, so I think that's a nice touch personally. Uh, however, I know that opinions vary on that one. On this specific colorway, I will note that the accent colors, that light blue, as much as I really like that, and I do like it quite a bit, as I shift around here, you might be able to pick up on camera, but you definitely can in person, it does tend to wash out a little bit. Against that gray, it does lose a little bit of legibility. That's something that possibly going with a brighter color uh, for that, a little more pronounced. The white, I never lost, but the blue, sometimes I do lose. That's something that I think could be improved. As far as the bezel. The bezel with only having five minute marks, you know, I'm not a diver, so I can't really speak to the functionality there, but I do believe it'd be helpful for that. But additionally, just for day-to-day -day use, I think it would have been nice for this uh, this traditional dive bezel to have individual minute marks going around instead of just the five minute marks. I think that would have added to some of the functional usage of this, uh, this dive bezel. And additionally, I think it would have helped with some of the legibility items that I just mentioned there. On the end links, while I do like that this is a female end link, you can see it's kind of deep set into uh, with the first link it's kind of deep set into the end link so it does have a bit of a drop down i'm usually not a huge fan of that and this one is true as well i just don't think it gives the cleanest appearance in the world though it's a fairly minor thing and then finally as far as dial legibility overall we've already talked about um, the functional usage of it but some people have commented on this being a little cluttered i don't think it's too bad you know in person i haven't really had that effect or sense but i will say i do think they probably could have lost the inner uh, five five minute marks there. I think they could have lost that without having any real functional or legibility issue. But again, all of these are very minor critiques and they're primarily going to be subjective as well. So take them for what they're worth. But those are my personal feedback thoughts. So where does that leave us? In summary, I've got to say, this one, if you're looking for a comfortable, versatile watch, I think this works well. I actually wore this with a suit um, a few times, uh, and additionally, I've worn this a lot casually, and I think it's been pretty fitting for every, uh, every usage with its good proportions, its overall nice balanced sizing, and just the general relatively uh, mild appearance that gives you enough pop and enough visual in interest for casual days, but at the same time isn't over the top for, uh, for dressier days. The theming for this, I think, is well done. I think the Maelstrom uh, effect, you know, the Whirlpool, the case back, those kind of things, I think it's well executed, and I like it uh, in general uh, there as well. Finally, as I've mentioned, I think this one is just a pleasure to wear. I think it hugs the wrist very well. It's very comfortable for the price. I think it's a decent buy. So if you're in the market and considering one of the many compressor-style watches that have been hitting this year, this one, I think, is a strong contender for you. So I hope this video has been helpful in making your decision. If it has, if you could please uh, hit that like button, that's appreciated. And additionally, and most importantly, if you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe button. Helps out the channel tremendously. And as mentioned, there are Amazon affiliate links as well as Instagram account if you want to check anything out further. Thanks for watching.